All right, so here's what we got so far. We got our chute handle and our CO2, just our air cylinder here to activate the chute. Obviously, we'll be able to activate this manually if wanted, uh, but I'm gonna have the ECU control it either. I haven't decided if I wanna push it, put it on a button, or I think what I wanna do is have it just as an automatic deploy, say above 150 mile an hour and 0% TPS. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my thought, but not sure on that. Anyway, I've got to get this stuff mounted. I have to make some gussets. It came with some gussets, um, but uh, I really didn't like them. So I'm just going to make my own out of some scrap I've got and get this thing tacked up in the car. All right, guys, I'm making these tabs to mount the handle and the uh, CO2 cylinder there. There's a couple people that make brackets for these. This actually came with some tabs. I had to shorten them to get it closer to the roll bar. They were meant to be a bolt on, so I had to cut the part of them off, the part that the bolt would normally go through, and I cut them too short. <laughs> so uh, here I am having to remake some stuff. I made more work for myself on accident there, but uh, that happens. Uh, once we get this thing tacked in place in the car, one of the things you got to pay attention to if you're doing this at home is you got to make sure you put the cylinder in the right spot for the travel when the cylinder's fully closed where you want the handle to be as far as how when you're reaching for it so make sure you mock that thing up put it through its motion a couple times uh, before you final weld stuff All right, definitely happy with how that turned out. I've got to get to, I'm printing some brackets to mount the cable in the uh, CO2 line that I got to run up to the solenoid still. So I'm going to get those done and then we'll finish mounting this stuff. Man, this dough call, even with it, uh, I oil it every now and then, but you can see it gets a little rusty. I got to oil this thing again. Maybe I'll do that later too. But uh, yeah, shoot handle and solenoid looks good. All right, so now that we got the chute cable ran, I ran the CO2 line too. I 3D printed these little brackets to hold the cables in place. A lot of people, you could just zip tie them to the roll cage and that's fine. Um, I just thought these were kind of neat and I have a 3D printer, so I want to use it. <laughs> um, but give you an idea, this clips onto the roll bar and the, these are different diameters, one's for the chute cable, one's for the CO2 line. And then you run a zip tie through it. You see the zip tie channel around the cable there and then obviously around the roll bar pretty cool um, I also did one for my Mac valve mount so I'm gonna mount this in the trunk hanging from a roll bar in the trunk and uh, obviously zip tie will go through that channel there to zip tie it to the roll bar the Mac valve slips into this little pocket and then the uh, CO2 fittings will hold the Mac valve into the bracket there so I'm gonna get this stuff put in the car I'll show you what it looks like when it's done All right, for now, I loosely ran the chute cable back here. It's just hanging out. Um, so we're gonna come up with a couple things. One, the catch can vent, because uh, the catch can is gonna be in the trunk. Normally, people vent that through the deck lid. I really don't like that idea. I'm not really sure why that's the go-to spot. I'm guessing just for ease of fabrication, because typically the cans are in the trunk, they just go straight up into the through the deck lid, right? Um, but it's kind of should be a high pressure area on most cars. So I'm gonna vent the catch can through here So I got to put a hole in this and through into the back of the car I'm also gonna run the chute cable through here as well And then obviously the chute mount itself is gonna come out of here now the chute mount itself is gonna be removable the idea would be that when we street drive the car I can just undo a bolt pull the chute mount and the, the tether mount out pull the cable back inside the car and that stuff will all be gone away, tucked in the trunk and we can street drive and put the plate back on it. Otherwise I gotta make a way to mount the plate and if we're gonna drive it at night, I'd have to put a different light somewhere on it too, which you could do something like a, like a little taped on LED over the plate and mount the plate from the back of the spoiler or the back of the wing, essentially I would assume. But uh, yeah, I think it's just easier to make that all removable and put the plate back where it was originally, so. Anyway, I'm gonna pull the bumper cover, tail lights, all this stuff off the back of it and uh, start seeing what stuff looks like. Lit. 
if you ever had to put a shoot on a car, you'll know that there's plenty of kits available. There's tons of options for like universal weld together kits. There's application specific kits. Like in this example, there's probably four or five I can think of off the top of my head for an S197 Mustang. But they're three or 400 bucks, I believe, typically. And none of them are for a CO2 launcher style shoot. They're all for a sprung pilot shoot style, like a traditional style shoot. Uh, so that, and I just love making stuff, guys. I don't know. I, so <laughs> I just would rather make one than, than buy one. And I had all the stuff sitting around to do it. I, I had to buy a couple things. Um, the bottom tube that the actual, the shoot tether bolts to, that's a, that I have removable in this when I get done with it. I had to purchase that. And I really didn't even need to purchase it. I just, it was cheap, so I bought it. But um, yeah, the majority of this stuff, other than that, I literally made from scrap I had sitting around. I have probably, I don't know, probably a hundred bucks of material or something. And it took me quite a while. It took me like uh, probably eight hours to build this thing. So was it a wise investment? I don't know, but I had a good time doing it. That's what matters. So. tacked and fit with the bumper cover back on it make sure stuff is where i want i'm going back through and i'm welding as much as i can possibly reach before i actually remove it to finish weld it on the table i just do that so that it's less likely to move around as i'm finished welding it uh, just so stuff will bolt back on as easily as we can kind of deal so and here i am spray painting this thing in my backyard <laughs> i didn't want to wait to send it out to get it powder coated so i threw some uh this is like wrinkled black i think spray paint on it so nothing serious but you know gotta do what you gotta do the actual shoot mount itself i saw somebody else i don't remember who it was but they had the actual co2 cylinder hose clamped to half of a tube so that's what i'm doing here i'm splitting this tube in half lengthwise and I'll set the CO2 cylinder in it and it's held on with a couple hose clamps. It's actually fairly rigid. I don't know if you, seems a little sketchy, but a lot of dragsters actually have hose clamps for a motor mount. You'll have a little plate that wraps around the tube and just a hose clamp holds stuff together. So I definitely trust it. All right, real quick while well, I got the bumper cover off and I'm drilling all these holes for the shoot cable, the CO2, and the uh, catch can vent there. I put the uh, quick release pin in here. It's just a 5 8 diameter pin for a trailer hitch receiver that I'm using to make that easily removable. So just wanted to show that to you guys real fast. looks pretty trick um, so now I'm just packing the chute temporarily I'm gonna cut the cable to length here and then I'm actually gonna unpack it I'm gonna hook up this cable bracket that goes to the back bolts to the back of the chute mount um, that's a motion raceworks piece it just holds the cable so when you pull the cable the, the sheathing of the cable can't actually move causing the chute to fail deployment uh, it's just a safety measure hold that cable in place and then the inner cable will move freely without the sheathing moving causing the chute to not open so uh, that's what we're doing here. All right, guys, got quite a bit done in this video. Uh, the next video, I'm going to change the setup of the car quite a bit. I'm putting a different front spring in it, going to do some travel limiters, going to change the ride height hopefully. I'm going to put an adjustable rear spring perch in it so I actually have ride height adjustment in the back of the car. Um, so I'll go over the, all that in the next video, so look out for that one. But that's it for this one. Season's two weeks away now, so I'm getting super excited. We're getting really close. I want to get this setup stuff changed, get the car on the dyno, make just a partial boost hit, you know, something crazy 14 pounds or so, and then uh, take it to the track and see what happens.